Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Today we're going to take a look at a very noisy computer power supply. So a friend came over and said, Paul, can you take a look at this thing? It's making a horrible racket. So let's take a look at this thing together and see if we can get this power supply working again. All right. Supposedly, according to the owner, this is the noisy culprit, this computer power supply here. So let's find out what it's doing. Look at all the dust coming out of this thing. This thing's filthy. You know what dust is, right? Look, most of it's dead skin. So I'm going to have to take this thing outside, use some compressed air and clean this thing out. But before I do anything like that, I don't want to disturb the fault condition. So opening the case or doing any of this kind of stuff first, a lot of the times, if it's an intermittent fault, it will disturb the conditioning. You can't find the fault. So you want you don't want to be too invasive with the thing at first. You just want to basically power it up gently and see what happens. That's what we're going to do right now. So I have a cord attached to my isolation transformer and current limited variac supply. I'll shut the supply off first before I plug this thing in, just in case it wants to go crazy and give off the magic smoke. All right, so put it like this. Turn this thing on. Hopefully it doesn't blow dust all over the place. Okay, so here we go. Now the reason the thing isn't turning on, I can have the power supply on, right, but it's not turning on, is because it needs a signal from the computer itself to turn the power supply on. So usually in the computer itself there's a FET or a transistor that will connect this green lead to the black lead here on the connector. So usually an open collector, open drain circuit or something like that in the computer will do that. So what I'm going to do in this case is take a 300 ohm resistor and I'm going to connect the two together. And you're saying, well, if the computer just shorts that, why are you using a resistor? When you work on power supplies long enough, you learn never to short anything, especially in, an, in a situation like this when we don't know what the situation is with the power supply. The power supply itself will create enough voltage to warm this resistor up in most cases. And if something goes, is really wrong with this, between those two areas, I can, I'll feel the warmth of this resistor. It's a high enough resistance to turn this thing on, but it's a low enough resistance to heat and tell me if something's really wrong. So again, if you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. This is my own thing, and I'm doing this on my end. Of course, if you're going to try and turn a power supply on, you can do that your own way. This is the way that I do things. Uh, years of experience has, has taught me this. Another thing I'm going to tell you here, a uh, little tip or trick that fools a lot of people that start to work on switch mode power supplies. Switch mode power supplies in industrial application, a lot of the times need a load on one of the supplies to run properly. So if you figured out how to try and start the power supply, but you'll notice it just kicks so or it pulses, so the fan will start and then stop and start and stop. Or if it has a, a power indicator lamp and it turns on and then goes off, on and then off. A lot of people will get confused by this and think that the actual power supply is faulty when it isn't. It actually just needs a load on one of the supplies and usually that supply is the 5 volt supply. So what I do in a case like that in, in an industrial application supply is I will give it usually a quarter of its load and that's enough to start the supply up. Now most computer power supplies will start or run without loads so we really don't need to worry about that in a case like this. At least I don't think so. So let's find out. So here I am, I'm going to take the green lead and I'm going to short that green lead to the black lead on the connector here and this should attempt to start or make smoke or do something pretty fantastic here. So here we go. Oh, that's bad. The actual desk is vibrating. Hopefully that'll stay in there. thing sounds like an old refrigerator. So this is obviously a mechanical issue, so the bearings in the fan are dry. Very dry. Even just moving the plastic case of the fan, just pressing on it is causing issues. So let's just pull that resistor out. And let's see if just spinning it through the case will make that noise. That'll really give us an indication if it's bearings. Oh yeah, you can hear that. Listen. It's kind of grunting. Maybe if I use something plastic, you won't hear the the actual knocking of the... Uh, there you go. Yeah. So, it's just dry bearings. Now, here's something that you won't hear very often. 
shut that off and disconnect this from the power supply. Here's something that you won't hear very often. So in most cases, people, what would they do with a with, with an issue like this? Well, of course, you're just going to remove the fan and replace it and throw it in the landfill and create more garbage in our landfills. When a lot of the times you can actually pull the fan apart itself and lubricate the bearings and they'll go for years again. Now, in this case, I don't know if I can actually get the fan apart, but if I can, I'm going to do that option because I want to keep this junk out of the landfill. And uh, we all know there's a lot of this stuff going there. So if I can revive the fan and keep the fan going, that's what I'm going to do. But again, you know, if they've created or put a fan in here that's completely not serviceable, the only option at that point would be to replace it. So that's going to be our very first thing we're going to try and do is just lubricate the bearings in this fan, take the fan apart and uh, see if we can fix this thing up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the screws out of the case. I'm going to remove this sticker that I love to open all the time. Warranty void if broken. Really? Well, let's see what happens here. Oh, look at that. Look what we just did. So there we go. Anyways, there's a screw hiding under there and they always put that on there. So if you take the case apart, they can uh, use all sorts of interesting things to say that, you know, they're not going to fix their product. So what I'm going to do is uh, remove the, the, the screws from the case here. So these are holding the, this, the actual uh, screen on the fan here. So I'll remove this one and this one and this one and this one and look for any other hiding screws if there are on the case. And uh, open the thing up and we'll take a look inside and see if we can actually make that fan work again. I've removed all four screws from the case and hopefully that will get us in. A lot of the times what ends up happening is they hide screws under stickers and things like that. Sometimes they're pretty tricky. So hopefully that will allow us to open this case up. We'll find that out in just a moment. I will mention in the previous clip, I was spinning the fan blade with this screwdriver here. And you'll notice that this screwdriver is a metal screwdriver. I inserted just enough of the screwdriver in to touch the plastic blade and that's it. Obviously, if I insert this too far, I'm going to touch circuitry and damage the power supply or even myself. All right, there's a large capacitor inside this power supply known as a bulk capacitor. And what that capacitor does is that takes what's coming from the line here. So what comes from the line goes through a thing called a bridge rectifier. And that bridge rectifier changes the AC to DC. And then this big cap here is the filter. You can see because it says 400 V on it inside there. You see that 400 V? That's a 400 volt capacitor down inside there. So I don't know if you, there you can see it there. Now that capacitor can hold a charge for a very, very long time and it can be very dangerous. So if you're unsure about what you're doing and you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. Be very, very careful. And again, this capacitor here can hold a charge for a very, very long time. All right. So what I'm going to do now is open this case. Looks like it's put together pretty tight. Well, maybe let's try and pull on this first here. That's together pretty tight. Let's put this in here like so and give it a bit of a pry. Look at that. Oh, look at that dust. I don't know if you can see that. Ah, I get to breathe all this wonderful stuff in. That's the price I pay for helping my friends out. Okay. I think yeah, it looks like it's coming apart. Somewhat. How are we doing? It feels like it's trying to come apart. Let's try to just remove the fan, because it's going to probably have to come out anyways. Let's just grab this screwdriver here. Let's try to remove this grill. Like that for a coarse threaded screw. Those are worse than drywall screws. So this may allow us to take this off the case. Get this out. So if the fan is holding it, now this will let go of that, and it seems like it is. All right, so here we are, one step closer, and that's it. So it was just catching on the case. Look at this thing. Whoa, that looks like that's gotten pretty hot. It looks like there's actually maybe even some fluid under there. Look at this. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else, because I don't want to inhale any more of this, I'm going to go put on a mask and I'm going to take this and uh, just do some compressed air and clean this thing out. I'll be right back. A little bit of compressed air and it looks like brand new. So a word of caution, whenever you're using compressed air on something like this, hold the blade. Don't let it spin. So don't spin the fan with the compressed air. Wow. I don't think I've ever heard a computer fan so incredibly dry. 
It's just, even just spinning it slowly causes the thing to vibrate like that. All right, so what I'm going to do is remove this from here. It'll allow me to get the fan away from the power supply. I can actually just completely remove the power supply right out of the way. And now we're left with just a fan. A fan that's uh, making all sorts of very interesting noises. You can almost use this thing for a sound effect. So it's, uh, it's turned itself from a fan into a sound effect generator. So what I'm going to do now is I will attempt to remove this sticker here. And we'll see what's on the underside. And of course they've got a little cap here which is sealing things up. So what I'm going to do is it looks like it's been very hot. He's even discolored the sticker there, right? So a little bit of silicone in there. So let's see if I can get that out of there with a very small screwdriver. And that might even just be a seal. Oh, there we go. It popped right out. So a lot of the times there is not only one bearing at the bottom, but there's a bearing on top as well. So if you put a drop of oil on this, a lot of the times it won't get to the other bearing. So what you want to do is remove that little plastic retainer inside there. And hopefully, I don't know if that has a little split in it, I can't even see that. So it may or may not have a split in it. So what I'll do is I'll grab some of my surface mount tweezers here and I'll see what's happening. I'm actually using the camera for this because it's so incredibly small. Yeah, there's the split. So that should come off. Okay, so sometimes these are a little bit tricky to get off. So what I'm going to do is... I don't know if these are going to be strong enough to do this because these are pretty... Pretty light tweezers. I don't want to damage those because I use them for surface metal work all the time. Let's see if I've got something a little bit more robust. Sometimes even just a bunch of small screwdrivers will do it. And I have a bunch of those on the other side. You got to be careful with this thing because a lot of the times it'll fly across the room and you'll never find the thing again. So maybe I'll just try two small screwdrivers here at first. And I'm going to attempt to do this fully on camera. I'm not even looking at it. Reason being is because it's almost invisible. Okay, so if I can get this apart, like so, get that down in there, and get this over here. Sorry about the defocusing there. There it is. And it didn't fly across the room. Okay, so I get that down here, right there for now. That's what that little washer looks like. And it looks like there's a little O-ring or something down in there. Okay, so let's push this thing right apart. Get that out. Nice, cute little O-ring there and a little washer. So we need to make sure that that washer is face down onto that bearing. When we put this back together. So now this should just pull apart. Like so. Now... These bearings here, it looks like there's just one possibly in there, yeah. And it's obviously dried up. And there is a little bit of debris on the inside here. Again, lots of dirt and dust. So what I'm going to do is clean this all out, and I'm going to apply some lubricant. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so what it looks like what's happening here is the grease is dried on this side, probably from heat. So maybe it's from the actual windings here getting hot or maybe even just from friction. You can see how, how actually, you know, it's almost solidified, right? And what's happening, I figure, is this little silicone washer that has this bevel on it is binding on there and it's vibrating because this lubricant on this side has hardened up. So what I'm going to do is, it looks like this has got some lubricant on this side and that's just because I've moved this around. It was pretty dry before. So what I'm going to do is clean out all of this hardened grease in here and I'll put a lubricant in here that will stay and we'll put the thing back together and see if it comes to life again. All right, I have a combination of some very light grease and a little bit of lubricating oil and when I cleaned this out, there was quite a bit of grease packed way down in. That actually goes pretty deep. So I filled that little cavity up with that grease and also put a little bit of that light lubricating oil on both sides 
of that little silicon washer there. Boy, did that ever feel smooth now. So now what I'm going to do is just put everything all back together. And this is going to take me a bit because I got to use both hands here and I got to drop the washers in place and pop this back on. Putting those little washers back on, it's actually pretty easy. You can use a little hollow pipe that works very well. Or you can just use two screwdrivers and all you do is I have a, a roll of solder underneath pushing up on the actual fan itself. So what you do is you just put a screwdriver on each side and then just pop it over. It usually goes on relatively easy. So I'll put this on this side here and this side here and give it a bit of a push. Again, a pipe works well for this as well. There it is, it's back on. Look at that. It's as smooth as glass. All right, so now what I want to do is clean this off just a little bit. Just the surface area. I don't want to wipe any of the oil or anything out of that little cup. So what I'll do is I'll now pop that back in, and that'll hold that oil in there. All right, and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some alcohol and clean this area off, and then I'll put that sticker back on. All right, so what do you think? Got the little sticker back on. So I used alcohol and cleaned that off real, real well. If there's any oil left behind, the sticker won't stick, right? So that needs to be cleaned off. So a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a cloth and then wipe the plastic surface and it just takes all the oil right off. So let's see if we can make this thing spin. So what I usually do is just grab another high value resistor. This is one mega ohm. And the legs of the resistor perfectly fit these little sockets so what i'll do is i'll just plug this into that socket and then i can use some clip leads and just clip to each side of the resistor here and this makes things easier so what i'll do is i'll grab my clip leads here and i'll put them onto my power supply one there and one there i believe turn the power supply on what is the voltage set to turn it on magically it's set to 12 volts okay obviously i've used this for something similar before Okay, so we want to make sure that we don't connect this backwards. And I will put this onto the red lead here. So obviously red to red and black to black, right? Make things easy on myself. Okay, what do you think? Let's hold this like this, making sure my hands don't touch anything, and power on. That's how it's supposed to sound. That pulsing, was it? Not making connection there for a moment. That sounds nice. That's just air. Air noise. Now, whether the actual computer power supply is giving it 12 volts or not, we'll be able to tell here soon, because this is pushing a lot of air. I think they're running it at a reduced voltage so that it keeps the actual supply nice and quiet. So we'll find that out. Because it's actually making quite a bit of noise. But boy, is it moving. Look at that, how smooth that is. All right. A little bit of a current hog, too, for a fan. Look at that. Almost an amp. 0.7 of an amp to make this thing spin like that. So what I'll do is I will now reinstall this into the power supply and we'll start the power supply. The fan is reinstalled and the power supply is put back together and it's nice and clean now. So let's see how the fan works. So what do you think? Is it going to spin fast and make lots of noise or is it going to spin relatively slow? Let's find out. Turn on the switch there. And again, connect the green to the black and away we go. Now that's the way a power supply should sound. That is silent. So that should last the long term. The lubricants that I used in the fan, uh, a blend of two separate lubricants I've been doing for a very long time, and it keeps these things going. So we saved another piece of plastic from going to the landfill. We fixed the actual problem, we didn't replace it. And that's what I like to do.
If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.